Okay, one other major story that broke on Monday, and this was a major story. This was a shocker, almost as big a shocker as when this person was hired. And I'm talking, of course, about the Marlins parting of ways with their general manager, Kim Ng. Now, you might remember when the Marlins hired Kim Ng. They sure didn't mind the positive publicity they got for hiring the first female general manager in the game's history. They didn't mind all the press. They didn't mind being labeled as this progressive, great organization. They sort of basked in it. Well, when you bask in that, and then you have this separation with this person who accomplished a great deal with your franchise, then you're going to get ripped when this all falls apart. And it all fell apart. I encourage everyone to read Britt Garoli's story today in The Athletic about Kim Ng's departure and why it happened. She has all the details. Basically, she wrote that Kim Ng felt that she was stripped of power, underappreciated, and that manifested itself in several ways. For one, they did not give her a contract extension. They simply picked up her option for next year, their end of the mutual option. She declined. Why did she decline? Well, in part because she didn't get an extension, in part because they wanted to bring in a president of baseball operations over her, and in part because she didn't have control of the personnel. She wanted to make some changes in certain departments. She wanted to get rid of some holdovers, people she felt were holding the organization back. And Bruce Sherman, the owner, evidently said no. So here's Kim Ng. What did she do as Marlins general manager? One, she hired the likely manager of the year in the National League, or at least the leading candidate for manager of the year, Skip Schumacher. She made the Arias trade, getting Luis Arias for Pablo Lopez, and you can certainly say, hey, I'd rather have the starting pitcher, but Arias helped change that franchise's offensive identity. The Soler signing was a really good one. She built a bullpen. This one-run game record that they had last season in 2022 that was so horrible, They turned it around into a great one-run record in 2023. And to top it all off, what was the final outcome of all that Kim Ng did? The Marlins making their first playoff appearance, albeit in expanded format, for the first time in a full season. The first time in a full season since they won the 2003 World Series. For all that, Kim Ng is out. Bruce Sherman couldn't figure out how to keep her. And I know we have a lot of ownership representatives in Dork of the Week. And it's because a lot of times ownership representatives deserve Dork of the Week. Now, Bruce Sherman is the owner of the Miami Marlins. And here's what Bruce Sherman has done after each of the team's last two playoff appearances. The first was in 2020. That was in the shortened season. And this one, of course, in 2023. 2020. Playoffs end. Marlins don't win the World Series. Their president of baseball operations, Michael Hill, bids farewell. He's gone. 2023, Marlins make the playoffs. First time in a full season since 2003 when they won the World Series. I mentioned that earlier. And what happens? Marlins part ways with Kim Ng. What is the common denominator here? And, of course, we can throw in Derek Jeter, who did not last with the Marlins under Bruce Sherman either. The common denominator is the owner. The owner who's not keeping competent people, highly qualified people, people who did well for him. They don't want to stay. Bruce Sherman, you've got a franchise that is challenged. We know that. It's tough to build an audience in the South Florida market. There are a lot of other things to do in that beautiful weather. And the Marlins have had trouble drawing, trouble doing a lot of things. But my goodness, when you get a competent operator, not just competent, Highly skilled, respected, someone who has brought great attention and positive press to your franchise, and she wants to leave, and you run her off, Bruce Sherman, Dork of the Week.